In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So welcome to this celebration of the Eucharist, always a celebration of God's infinite love and mercy towards us. We gather with all the prayers that we have in our hearts, prayers for the world, prayers that have been sent uh, to us uh, to offer along with this Holy Eucharist. And in a particular way, I'd like to mention uh, the birthday of Lala D. She celebrates a special birthday today, so we include her among all the many petitions that we have. And so we begin always acknowledging the mercy of God for us and therefore acknowledging our faults our failures, our need to be forgiven. And we ask God to heal us. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your right hand, O Lord, we pray, encompass your family with perpetual help, so that, defended from all wickedness by the resurrection of your only begotten Son, we may make our way by means of your heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A move was made in Iconium by Gentiles and Jews, together with their leaders, to abuse and stone Paul and Barnabas. When they learned of this, they fled to Laconian, towns of Lystra and Derby, and of the surrounding country, where they continued to proclaim the good news. At Lystra, there was a man who was lame from birth. 
He used to sit crippled, never having walked in his life. On one occasion, he was listening to Paul preaching, and Paul looked directly at him and saw that he had faith to be saved. He called out to him in a loud voice, Stand up on your feet. The man jumped up and began to walk around. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they cried out in the Conian, Gods have come to us in the form of men. They named Barnabas Zeus, Paul they called Hermes, since he was the spokesman. Even the priest of the temple of Zeus, which stood outside the town, brought oxen and garlands to the gates because he wished to offer sacrifice to them with the crowds. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd. Friends, why do you do this? They shouted frantically. We are only men human like you. We are bringing you the good news that will convert you from just such follies as these to the living God, the one who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past ages, he let the Gentiles go their way. Yet in bestowing his benefits, he has not hidden himself completely without a clue. From the heavens he sends down rain and rich harvests. Your spirits he fills with food and delight. Yet even with a speech such as this, they could scarcely stop the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not, Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. Because of your kindness, because of your truth, why should the pagans say, Where is their God? Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Our God is in heaven, whatever he wills he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your meaning give the glory. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Heaven is the heavens of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Alleluia, alleluia. I went from the Father and came into the world, and now I leave the world to return to the Father. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, He who obeys the commandments he has from me is the one who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father. I too will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said to him, Lord, why is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, Anyone who loves me will be true to my word, and my Father will love him. We will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine. It comes from the Father who sent me. This much have I told you while I was still with you. The paraclete, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will instruct you in everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Faith to Receive Miracles. Our first reading tells of another miracle, 
miracle performed by Paul and Barnabas. Uh, as we heard, uh, there was this cripple, uh, cripple from birth, never having walked in his life. And um, Paul saw him, and uh, Paul, we are told, looked directly at him and saw that he had the faith to be saved. And after that, uh, Paul healed him by asking him to stand up, and he stood, and he walked to the amazement of everyone. We are told of this miracle, but before this miracle, we are told that Paul said he had the faith to be saved. The man had the faith to be saved. I think this then is an occasion for us to uh, be aware of three very common um, misconceptions uh, that we may have with regard to miracles. First, we are told the man Paul saw had the faith to be saved or to be healed you know, in another translation. And so it was first a faith, then the healing, then the miracle, not the other way around. You know? We don't expect to have faith because of witnessing miracles. So it's not uh, sometimes you know, we think we have the impression that a miracle is there to convince us to strengthen our faith. But the reverse is true. It is when we have faith that miracles happen. Or maybe, to be more precise, when we have faith, then we are able to recognize and to see miracles. So first, it's not the other way around. Miracles are not there to be the condition for our faith. It's the other way around. It's faith that is the condition for miracles. Second, one might then think, oh, a miracle is a reward for faith. Because you have faith, you are a good person, God will reward you with miracles. So we want to have the faith so that we will receive our miracles. Well, even that is not quite right. Because faith is a gift. Faith is not our achievement. It is a gift. And therefore, it is not about how much I can make myself believe and convince God that I'm worthy to receive miracles. No. It is how God prepares us to receive God's miracles. And the third and final point. What are miracles? Are miracles simply things that cannot be explained? If that's what a miracle is, no, then uh, very often we find ourselves, you know, um, unable to, to see miracles because we're always looking for things that we cannot explain. And many things because of science, because of our advances in knowledge, we, we are able to explain. So just because we can explain something, does that, does that remove the, the possibility of a miracle? And it calls into question, therefore, how we define miracles. Yes, a miracle is God's goodness towards us. But it does not have to be a goodness that is shown in a way that violates natural law. No? Rather, what is natural, what is of our true nature, is precisely what God put in us when God created all of creation, namely God's goodness. And therefore, a miracle is the recognition of this goodness that comes from God, that is already in us. That is why it's a beautiful psalm that we uh, prayed as a response to our first reading, the story of the miracle. And which is also the, what we uh, heard in the first reading about Paul's struggle with these um, Gentiles no? uh, who then started to glorify Paul and Barnabas as if they were gods, gods with power. 
And so the psalmist says, not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. A miracle is God's showing of God's goodness to us. And we need faith to be able to recognize not just the goodness, but the source of that goodness. To recognize it is God who is author of the miracle. And when we are able to understand miracles as they truly are, as being God's glory, not ours, then we begin to see how common miracles are in our time right now. There's so much suffering, so much pain. But when we look around, there are many sacrifices made. Maybe sacrifices of our own freedoms. No? We cannot go out. Maybe we feel we are strong, but we do not go out, not only to protect ourselves, but to protect the people around us, not just the immediate family we live with, but society. No? We make sacrifices, of course. There are plenty of sacrifices being made by the frontliners. No? those who have to attend to those who are sick, those who have to go out and um, expose themselves to the dangers no? in distributing food for the hungry, all these sacrifices. No? We are witnesses to God's goodness because as we are told in the gospel by Jesus, no? anyone who loves me will be true to my word and my Father will love him. We will come to him and make our dwelling with him. It is this indwelling of God in us that empowers us to participate in God's miracles. And so when we do, it is not to us the glory, but to God. And so let us pray that we may have this faith, a faith to recognize the goodness of God dwelling within us and to participate, therefore, in God's manifestation of God's goodness to all of us. Together now we offer our prayers. With confidence, let us now raise our hearts to God, the Father, who guides us through his word. For each prayer we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may live the spirit of the gospel and seek God's will in her ministry of service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may all work for justice and human dignity, especially for the weak and the poor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as a community, we may support and uplift one another with the love and gentleness which the Lord has shown us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick in mind, body, and spirit may find complete healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may enter the place Christ has prepared for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for the celebrations of birthdays today, for Alexa Ting, for Father Manny Perez of the Society of Jesus. We also remember and pray for all our dearly departed, especially Dindo Makapagal and Eddie Gancaico. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we finally pray for the intentions you have sent to our Facebook pages here at Jescom and Radio Katipunan. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, hear our prayers and open our hearts to welcome and love our needy brothers and sisters. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Our gifts are prepared. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, hosts, heaven and earth are full of your, of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim, proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess, profess your resurrection, resurrection until, until you come, you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, all the clergy, all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together now, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and, power and glory are yours now, now and forever. And forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God, he who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who have been invited to his banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together we pray the oration. God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection 
against the 2019 and coronavirus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go in the peace and joy of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Taste
We've been singing this song for a long time now. We sing it after every game, win or lose. We sing it in every graduation. This is the song of our alma mater, our school, our nurturing mother. It is our battle song. It is our fighting song. And these days, we are engaged in this one big fight of our lives. We remember that battles are very much part of who we are. We are no strangers to battle. We remember Ignatius Loyola. We remember Pamplona. Remembering all this, we know we will never surrender. We will not surrender our faith, our faith in ourselves, in one another, in Our Lady, our faith in our Lord. And so we pray as we sing. We pray, Mary, to please keep us constantly true, to pray to please help us keep the faith, faith in ourselves, faith in one another, faith in her, and faith in the love of our Lord. One big fight. Here is 